Iodine is a purple halogen that is very useful in organic chemistry. Iodine sublimes, which means that when it's heated up instead of going through the traditional solid liquid gas phase, it skips the liquid phase and just goes straight to the gas. Iodine's most common use is in medicine. Iodine works by penetrating into microorganisms, which ultimately results in cell death. Iodine is listed on the USA's DA watch list as the least one precursor chemical due to its ability to reduce ephedrine and pseudoephedrine into amphetamines. However, I won't go into it in this video since it's most likely illegal. This video is actually my first step into making all of the forms, which if you don't know are fluoroform, chloroform, bromoform and iodoform. And to brought those iodoform I've needed some iodine, so if you want to see those be sure to subscribe. For this experiment I will be using 50 grams of potassium iodide, 23 ml of concentrated hydrochloric acid and concentrated hydrogen peroxide. Alright, so to begin, first I've weighed out around 50 grams of potassium iodide on my mini scale. Then I've added around 40 ml of water to dissolve the potassium iodide into the solution. After that I've added my stir stick and put it on strong stirring. After it has all dissolved I've began adding 34% concentrated hydrochloric acid. What we have right now in the beaker is a solution of dissolved elemental iodine and potassium chloride. Next I started by putting some hydrogen peroxide. As you can see, the color of the solution slowly starts turning violet. After pipetting some, I went ahead and added most of my peroxide into the beaker. Remember, if you want to do this, the hydrogen peroxide must be used in excess, otherwise you may not pull out all of the iodine. That's why later I've added another batch of the peroxide. As you can see, the reaction has quite heated up and the iodine started subliming. So I've placed a flask over the beaker so that we can capture some of the gaseous iodine. So as I take away the beaker, there's still a bunch of iodine vapor. So I've left it outside for a couple of minutes to cool. After I've came back, most of the iodine had settled. I've decided to pour off some of the water from the beaker into a funnel. In the end, I didn't really have to pour it into the funnel because there wasn't really much iodine that was lost. So here's our lamp of wet iodine and it's time to move on to the final step which is a purification and the drying step at the same time. So I've prepared a giant beaker and I've added the wet iodine into it. So I've sprayed the iodine so that it can be focused at the bottom of the beaker. So I've put a flask full of cold water on the beaker and I've cranked up my hot plate to the max. Shortly after, a bunch of iodine vapors began to form. What we are doing here is a recrystallization. Iodine is being cooled by the surface of the glass, which lets it recrystallize on the surface. So, as the iodine is being heated, it started to produce a film of iodine around the walls of the beaker. I've also snuck a pipette into the opening of the beaker as a kind of plug so that we don't lose as much of the iodine vapors. As the concentration of the iodine increased in the beaker, the purple vapor became more apparent and the iodine film on the walls became even thicker. Suddenly the water in the beaker which is keeping the beaker cool started to heat up itself. So I've decided to change out the water for a new one. As you can see, as I've added the fresh water, the vapors calmed down because they started condensing onto the flask. After there was almost no iodine left, I've turned off the hot plate to let it cool. After it has cooled, I've grabbed the flask and started scraping off the iodine. Although to my surprise, this giant piece has detached itself from the flask. I think that it looks actually really beautiful and it kind of looks like a iodine forest of crystals. On itself, it looks really cool, although it's really brittle. Anyway, I've started scraping off the iodine from the beaker walls with my bayonet knife. So after I have got most of it I've put it in my favorite Tatar sauce jar. The total yield was around 32 grams of iodine which is around 84% total yield. So that's all folks, here's what I'm working on, if you like my content be sure to like and subscribe.